A pleasant day, STEM learners. This is Sir Peter, your pre-calculus teacher. For today's discussion, we will talk about week number seven, series, sequence, and summation notation. Are you ready? So at the end of this video lesson, you should be able to illustrate a series and differentiate a series from a sequence. Let's begin. What is a sequence? A sequence is a function whose the domain is the set of positive integers and whose range is the set of all real numbers r. Notice that the domain x are only possible for all positive integers because, because it is impossible to have negative first term, negative second term, and negative third term, and so on. So the only possibility is that it should have a sub one representing the first term, a sub two representing the second term, a sub three representing the third term, and so on, up to a sub n, which is also known as the n term of the sequence. So if we are pertaining to the ninth term, then a sub n is also a sub nine. We can also define a sequence as a succession of specific numbers in order. So they follow a certain rule or formula or property. Every element on the sequence is referred to as the term. So they are arranged accordingly as the first term, the second term, and the third term, and so on. One type of sequence is what we know as the finite sequence. So a sequence with definite number of terms is known as finite sequence. So it is clearly identified by its first term and the last term. In symbols, the first term is referred to as a sub one, and the last term is a sub n, depending on the number of terms in the given sequence. Let's have 10, 8, 6, 4, 2 as an example. So this is a perfect example of a finite sequence because the first term is 10, the last term is 2. And how many terms do we have? We have five terms. So therefore, our a sub five is two, which is the end term of this sequence. Consequently, the next examples also show a finite sequence because again, the first and their last terms are clearly defined and we can easily count the number of terms in this given sequence. Now, let us recall the different types of sequence that you have discussed during your grade 10 mathematics. Do you still remember an arithmetic sequence? So an arithmetic sequence is a sequence in which each term after the first is obtained by adding a constant D, which is also known as the common difference. So that common difference is the one that you continuously add to every term of the sequence. Say for example, if we have the given sequence one, three, five, seven, and so on, it is clearly defined by its common difference. So we have seven minus five is two, five minus three is two, and three minus one is two. So therefore, Using this example, this is now an arithmetic sequence. Let's proceed to the next review. Do you still remember a geometric sequence? Observe the given figure. So a geometric sequence is a sequence in which each term after the first is obtained by multiplying the preceding term by a constant r, 
this time it has no common difference but it it has a common ratio r so say for example we have 1 3 9 27 and so on notice that when we divide the preceding term to the succeeding term, we have 27 divided by 9, we have 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And 3 divided by 1 is 3. So therefore, our common ratio, R, is 3. So we can classify that given sequence as a geometric sequence. Now, do you have an idea about a harmonic sequence? So if a given a sub n is an arithmetic sequence, say for example, the given arithmetic sequence is 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on. You can transform this um, sequence into its reciprocal. So we get the reciprocal of every term. So we have the reciprocal of 1 is 1 over 1, so that's still 1. The reciprocal of 3 is 1 third. The reciprocal of 5 is 1 fifth. And the reciprocal of 7 is 1 over 7. So this is now the equivalent harmonic sequence of this given arithmetic sequence. So every arithmetic sequence has a corresponding harmonic sequence. And lastly, I know that you are familiar with this type of sequence. We have the Fibonacci sequence, which also shows a golden ratio, just like this figures in nature. So a Fibonacci sequence is a sequence where its first two terms and the other either both one or zero and one of each term thereafter is obtained by adding the two preceding terms. So if we start with one, one, then to get the next term, we should add one plus one. So we have two. To get again the next term, one plus two, three. Next term is five because we have two plus three. Next term is eight and so on. So this is the perfect example of a Fibonacci sequence. So a sequence with no definite number of terms in an, is what we know as the infinite sequence. Okay, so the infinite sequence here is um, negative 9, negative 2, 5, 12, 19. And notice that we use this symbol to indicate an infinite sequence, meaning and so on. Next, what about a series? So we have to compare now a sequence from a series. So a series is the indicated sum of all the terms in the given sequence. So it is denoted by S sub N, where N refers to the number of terms. So if a given sequence is finite, its corresponding series is also a finite series. So it means that we can easily get the sum of this type of sequence. So the ellipsis indicates that the other terms of the series follows that, um, that you should omit them for convenience of writing. So it makes our work simpler. For example, you wanted to write the sum of all the positive integers from 1 to 100. So we'll simply write 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot, dot, dot. So we write an ellipsis plus 100. So you don't need to write everything. You simply write the ellipsis to omit some of the terms. But it is understood that we add all the numbers from one to 100.
So if a sequence is finite, then we can easily get the value of the sequence. However, if the sequence has infinitely many terms, the sum can only be defined more precisely in calculus. So there is a way to find the sum of infinitely many terms, but it will be tackled in the subject calculus. Now, let's talk about the different types of series. We have the arithmetic series. So the arithmetic series is denoted by S sub n is equal to n times the quantity A sub 1 plus A sub n over 2. Meaning you just have to add the first and the last term times the number of terms divided by 2. Or deriving the formula, we also have this one. So if the common difference is given, then you can use this formula. The associated geometric series with n terms is given by this formula. So we have S sub n is equal to n times A sub 1. So simply multiply the number of terms by the first term if your common ratio is 1. However, if your common ratio is not equal to 1, then use this formula, which is the first term times the quantity 1 minus the common ratio raised to the number of terms all over 1 minus the common ratio. For the next type of series, the infinite geometric sequence is an indicated sum of infinite geometric sequence. So if the first term is given, and the common ratio is there, we can solve for the sum of all the terms in the infinite geometric series using this formula. So literally, the sum cannot be determined. This kind of problem is usually treated by calculus that is beyond the scope of pre-calculus. So therefore, this formula here was derived from some formulas applicable in the basic calculus subject. So again, the formula in getting the sum of infinite geometric series is A sub 1 over the quantity 1 minus R. So the only given that you need will be the first term and the value of R. Now let's have illustrative examples of how to get the sum of infinite geometric series. Now, if you're going to ask me, Sir Peter, is it possible to find the sum of a number which is infinite? So this is only true when the infinite geometric series is in decreasing order. So notice that the terms are 10, 2, 0 0.4, 0 0.08, and so on. But how is it possible to find it? Again, simply use the formula. So our formula is S is equal to A sub 1 over the quantity 1 minus R. So for our given, our first term A sub 1 is equal to 10. Um, our um, R so simply divide 2 divided by 10, 0.4 divided by 2, 0 0.08 divided by 0 0.4. So the answer is 10, 2 over 10 is 1 over 5. Substituting the values, the first term is 10. We have 1 minus 1 fifth. Next, we have 10 over 1 minus 1 fifth is 4 fifths. Getting the reciprocal of 4 fifths, we have 10 times 5 over 4. So we will get 50 over 4. And what is 50 divided by 4? That is exactly 
12.5. So you see, guys, on the first part, 10 plus 2 is already 12. And the remaining decimals, 0 0.4 plus 0 0.08, and so on, are what we obtain the sum, which is 0.5. So we can clearly um, see that it applies on this formula. So if you continuously add more decimals, still you will get 0.5 as the sum. Well, 10 and 2 here is reflected as a whole number. Let's have another example. Suppose we have the given infinite geometric series, which is 1 minus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.01 minus 0 0.001 plus and so on. So notice that our first term is one. And how do we get the next term? Observe that we have an alternating sign, a minus sign, plus sign, minus sign. So therefore, our common ratio is negative. Then dividing 0 0.1 divided by one, 0 0.01 divided by 0.1, 0 0.001 divided by 0 0.01. Consider also the sign. Notice that their common ratio is 0 point, negative 0 0.1. Okay? So therefore, our common ratio is negative 0 0.1. Following again our formula for the infinite geometric series, we have a sub 1 times the quantity 1 minus r is equal to the first term is 1. Then we have 1 minus negative 0 0.1. What is 1 minus negative 0 0.1? That is 1.1. Multiplying both sides by 10, I mean the numerator and the denominator, we will get 10 over 11. So therefore, when we add and subtract continuously by the common ratio negative 0 0.1, then we will get the sum 10 over 11. Here are the references used in this presentation. So for our next video lesson, we're still on week number seven. This time we will talk about the summation notation. Did you learn something for today? Again, this is Sir Peter, your virtual pre-calculus teacher.